Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kiona. I'm a PhD student at Chalmers University of Technology here in Gothenburg, Sweden. With me today is Kiara, who is a postdoc Hi. here. And together, we're going to be telling you about Rimskolen, bringing the universe to the classroom. This is a new outreach program that Kiara and I developed, trying to reach out to more uh, of the surrounding areas in Gothenburg. So here on this plot, we've shown um, the percentage of people who are born in a foreign country, a uh, poor region district in Gothenburg. Uh, so Chalmers is located in a pretty uh, Swedish born district um, and the space observatory that Chalmers is associated with down in the south uh, called Ansela Space Observatory is also uh, not really dominated or there's not a whole lot of foreign born uh, inhabitants. And we wanted to make sure that we were reaching out to all of the areas that might have otherwise been underserved by outreach activities due to funding from the schools and their possible in inability to rent a bus and come down to the um, Chalmers uh, Observer, sorry, the Ansela Space Observatory. Um, so when we were designing this activity, we designed this around this concept of science capital. Uh, so science capital is basically um, anything that you know that is related to science. So this is your knowledge, your attitudes, your experiences, and your network of scientific individuals that you know. Uh, so for example, someone with high science capital might be someone whose parents are academics or researchers, and by academics, I mean scientific academics and STEM. Um, and someone with low science capital might be someone who as uh, parents are hairdressers and maybe don't have a, like a large network of scientists that they know. So the idea behind our program is to both uh, reach out to these um, otherwise underserved communities and to really uh, make the point that science is for uh, them. So they like get their hands on real data and so on. Uh, we also based our approach off of a survey from the UK called the Aspire survey. Um, and this is a survey that looked at children from age 10 to 14, and then the same children from age 14 to 19. And they investigated how young people's views of science and STEM change over time. And if they think that science is something that they're able to do, if they think that it's important, if they think that it's a, a field that they can go into and so on. Um, so the Aspire survey provides a couple of suggestions uh, that we tried to incorporate into our program namely to move away from single experience initiatives um, and build these like longer term, you know, multi year long projects with the schools and with students as well to focus um, on underrepresented communities and not only just to focus on teaching pure science, but also the lens with which we teach the science through. Um, and Kiara will talk a little bit more about how we incorporated that. So just to wrap up my section, uh, we, like I said, Room Schooling is a project that was started in 2020. Uh, that was designed to target socioeconomically disadvantaged areas here in Gothenburg that might have otherwise been underserved by the astronomy and plasma physics uh, activities here at Chalmers. Uh, our lectures were both linked to the national curriculum here in Sweden and given in English. Uh, and they, we did this, or we tried to do this in a narrative inclusive way, all of which Kiara will go into more detail in, in just a moment. And of course this was feasible or is feasible during the pandemic as we started this in 2020. Although I'm sure everyone can agree that activities over Zoom are not quite as fun as what we would normally be doing. All right, that is my portion and I will hand it over to Kiara now. Okay, so we, um, like Anna said, we based our activities um, on the suggestion given by the, uh, the Aspire survey. So we decided to, uh, to design a series of meetings uh, with each class, so typically two or three meetings. Uh, with uh, the content that I'm going to describe right now. So we started the first meeting with um, a description of uh, ourselves and our um, uh, experiences so far in academia. So our academic path, but also what our background was and how we uh, get to the decision of, of, uh, of going into astronomy in the first place. And um, we did that uh, to emphasize in which way we differ from the stereotypical scientists and also to, to strengthen the, the message that we want to, to uh, get across, which is science is for all, is for everyone. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, so, uh, and this was our introduction basically. And we, got, uh, we got questions from the, from the students and from the teachers uh, about our personal views on, uh, on uh, academia but also on, uh, on science and astronomy in general. So we answered these questions in the second session of our, um, of our meetings. 
Then we had um, um, a more classical scientific lecture in which we um, uh, we go uh, we dive we dove a little bit deeper into uh, topics that are already in the national Swedish curriculum. Uh, we did this, uh, including also some mentee questions uh, to keep the interaction with the students uh, and us uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, alive. Um, and then uh, the last part of our meetings was uh, dedicated to an interactive activity where we um, engage students in the creation of an RGB image using data from the Fox telescope and uh, the online tool JS9. So the, uh, the Fox telescope is a collection of robotic telescopes uh, in Ohio and Australia. Um, these were uh, built and um, and they are now maintained and, and operated only for educational purposes. So schools and universities can get access to telescope time directly, but also to their data archive and the um, vast educational resources that they offer to the teachers and to the students. So it's, it's really a great tool for outreach. And then, uh, so we were provided the students with this data and uh, they were able to upload them on, uh, um, on the online tool JS9, which is uh, a similar tool than uh, the software DS9 where, that astronomers use routinely to, uh, to view um, astronomical images. And uh, this version is of course a little bit uh, simpler and easier to use in general, but also the main feature is that uh, it doesn't require the, uh, to download any any software or data directly on your local machine. And this was very convenient for us because here students are provided by the schools with Chrome, individual Chromebooks, but they're, they're not able to, um, uh, to download software of them because of uh, how uh, Chromebooks work. Um, so at the end of each meetings, um, of each series of meetings, we um, ask for feedback both to the teachers and to the students. This is an example of the questions that we asked and also an example of the, of the feedback that we got. And it is overall very positive and we were very happy about that. And uh, we found that it's also very much in line with our final thoughts after each series of meeting with, the, with each class. And uh, it, is, it appears also very clear, like what, is the, what are the points that we want to improve on? Uh, and uh, this is what we are going to work on uh, in, uh, in the next cycles of activities with the schools. So generally, uh, given the current online situations, we, uh, we were able to, uh, to reach uh, schools all across Sweden. So that was a really, uh, a really good advantage, but of course, uh, also um, it was a bit more difficult to get as personal as we wanted it to be because of, you know, a screen doesn't work as, uh, as well as, uh, as good as being in person in class. Um, the presentation were given in English by me and Kiana because we are not uh, uh, completely fluent in Swedish. Um, and this was not always like ideal for some of the students. So we, we are going to work on that. But overall, we noticed that the, that the students were very um, uh, enthusiastic and interested in uh, creating the image. So we thought that this was very positive in the end. And uh, so we would really like to do more. Uh, so the next steps uh, will be to uh, create more uh, activities, different ones uh, during the summer break, always like trying to connect them with the Swedish curriculum uh, because we want to visit uh, the schools that we already uh, met this early this year, but also uh, we would like to connect to more schools with a larger portfolio so that they can also choose what they think they suit, the, the activity that suit better their, their students at that moment. Also, we would like to, uh, to do more long-term projects with maybe a, a smaller number of students that are interested already in astronomy or science in general, and uh, we're going to see how to, uh, how to do that in the near future. So this was Rim Skolman. Uh, thank you very much for giving us a talk, a cap, and um, uh, we accept questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>